<laughs> I thought I'd seen it already. Oh, it is. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. So, the bad news gets worse in a lot of ways. I got very excited when I measured the bores because I found out it is actually, it is a big bore which the person who sold it me didn't either know or wasn't telling me. I was hoping I could just slap it all back together with a few new seals and it'd be good to go. Unfortunately, it never works out like that. There's quite a few little bits that I need to address to address that oil leak that I'd found. But more importantly than that, I think I need to have a better look at the barrels and the bores. They don't look quite as good as I thought they were at first. So I'm going to take the barrels off so I can have a better look at what's going on there and perhaps have a, a quick peer down inside. Um, I'm going to do that first because that might be the biggest issue that I've got. And then in this video, hopefully, we'll go through all the bits and pieces I've found with the head that I think were perhaps causing the oil leak that it had. To remove the barrels, all of the fastenings have already gone because you've took the cylinder head off. So I'm going to give it a little bit of tappy here and there so it gets loose and then gently ease it up, making sure the cam chain just goes down the tunnel. Um, it's a shame really because I think they'd managed to seal the base gasket quite well. Uh, not to worry. I think we've got it moving now. Let's get on to wiggle time. I'll just move these pistons down the bore a bit. Hopefully that'll make life a bit easier for me. Just get this gasket out of the way and we can have a closer look. Once again, there's no real smoking gun pointing out here. These look like new rings. What's going on? I've had a little bit of time looking at these now and the more you look, the less impressed you become. There is some really, really good news, but equally, there's some really, really bad news. You see an engine and you take it apart and it's clean inside and it looks like someone's taken reasonable care and you know, you expect they've probably taken care. Uh, and then you start to find the odd little problem here and there, which I'd found with the head. And now, looking at the pistons and the bores and the rings, I've found a few more problems. The good news is I spotted this 812, I'd already worked out it was about 810 or 812 cc, and Popeye! No, it's not Popeye, it's Pop Y. And that is Pop Yoshimura. So these are Yoshimura pistons. Um, they the original ones, obviously, from the 80s, uh, but they race spec. They came in two varieties, a 10.25 compression and a 12 point something compression. Looking at these, these are the 10.25. So that's quite exciting. And 
Although there's a few scuffs here and there, the actual pistons themselves are not in such bad condition. Now the bad news. Don't laugh. But when you squeeze these together, these ring gaps, they just look a little bit bigger than I would have expected as they stand. And I think that might have led to another problem that I've got with the barrels. Let's whip one off and we'll have a look. I've got a handy ring tool that I've had for quite a long time. If I can uh, spot them online, I'll put a link to these because to do this job makes it a lot easier. I just make it look hard. There we go. When I measured the bores before, I spotted that they were 64 mil, and a standard CB750 would be 61. I know that these are not the most accurate thing in the world, but they're, they're not badly, you know, not that far out. Now, to measure a ring gap, what you should do is put it in the bore and push it down to about halfway down. So I'll just get it in first of all I mean even when I get it in there you can see the gap is looking a little bit ropey but what I'll do is I'll push it down using this so that I've got it at an equal height on the uh, actual bore inside the stroke on one of these is 63 millimeters. So what you want to do is get the ring sort of halfway down the level of the stroke. So I've set this to about 30, 30 and a half. And I'll just use this to level it up because you want it so that it's at the same height all the way around. There we go. And if you look, you can see a suspiciously big ring gap straight away. The bores are reasonably clean, but I had noticed there were some lines running down them and some of them are actually scratches that I can feel. They're not very deep, but they are there. The ring gap on these should be 0.2 to 0.4 of a millimeter with a service limit of 0.7. Now I know that's going to be slightly different for the, the bigger bore, but it's going to be slightly different by a Nats Nadger, it's not going to be worth worrying about. So I've found the feeler gauges that I can fit in. So remember I was looking for 0.2 to 0.4 and well there's a 0.8 a 0 0.7, a 0 0.05, and a 0.3. So I make that 185. So that's one millimeter, 0.85, and it should be 0.2. This gap, I think, is what's caused the lines on the side of the bore, and a couple of them are reasonably deep scratches. So I'm quite frustrated by that because although they, I think they're new rings, they obviously were far too small in the first place. I've checked a few of the rings now and taking them off and putting them into the right cylinders. This one's the top ring from number three. And again, it's you know nearly two millimeters of end gap, which is massively wrong and definitely what's causing these marks and even scratches in the sides. Roughly measuring the pistons, they're all around 63.9, 63.95, which is the right sort of measurement for 64mm pistons. Measuring the bores, they're coming out at 64.3, a little bit more, a little bit less. I know I'm not measuring it down where the actual wear part is, but I think it's a good indication of what they're like. So the bad news gets worse in a lot of ways. The pistons all seem to be standard Yoshimura ones. The rings all seem to be a standard set. 
probably off a CB350. And measuring the bores, and I know I'll get criticised for the standard of my measuring, but I've only got a vernier, and it's, I think, giving me near enough measurements so that I can be uh, making decisions on it. It's telling me that the bores are about 0.25 of a millimetre, too big for these pistons. So they've either been bored or probably honed out that little bit extra just to tidy them up and it's made them too big. And too big for the piston rings but too big for the pistons as well. And now I've got those marks on there, I'd either have to hone them or bore them myself which will take them to another size up. So I found some sexy pistons, but they won't work with these bores. Now, I can think of a number of roads ahead. One is buy new barrels and pistons off our second hand ones, fit them and accept, you know, back to a 750. I can try and find a set of barrels and have them bored to fit the pistons. Or I could see if I could get liners that I could get these taken out, new liners in, and bored to fit the pistons. What would you do? All of those have got some expense to them, and I don't know about the rest of the engine, but I'd be interested in the comments what you'd think would be the best road ahead with these barrels and pistons. Before I talk about the uh, oil leak side of it, there was one other thing with the barrels that uh, I found questionable, and that was the head gasket. It's a lovely multi-layer steel gasket, and the thing that surprised me, these are 64 mil bores, and this is a head gasket for a 61 mil, so about a mil and a half at the top was being shrouded by the head gasket. Again, not something you would have thought someone building an engine would be happy with. The engine number is for an F-series, but I'm not sure if this barrel is an F-series or not. reason I say that is I thought the F-series, these knock pins, so-called things, that it only had four and this has got eight. So I think this might be a K-series barrel. The head, however, is definitely an F-series head. It's got the bigger in, uh, inlet valves, two millimetres bigger, and it's got the oval-shaped combustion chambers that give it a slightly higher compression ratio. And it might be that that uh, head gasket, the fact it was shrouding the top, might not have mattered because part of the head here actually shrouds the top of the bore. Let's see about any smoking guns for oil leaks around the head. These knock pins should be flush or below the head and when I put a straight edge across it you can actually see there's about a millimetre gap. And looking at the head gasket you can see that the knock pins have been definitely pushing against that very vigorously. Another common reason for oil leaks is when you've replaced the head gasket with a multi-layer steel one or any other type, frequently they're a slightly different thickness than a standard Honda one. You have this o-ring and there's oil coming through here and the standard Honda size I think is 2.1 millimetres, measure it with this. But when you actually measure how far proud of the head it is, it's only about 0.7 of a millimetre. These gaskets, when they crush down, are 1.1 millimetre thick. So there's 0.4 of a millimetre between the o-ring and the gasket. Now, the o-ring will sit against the gasket, but it's not a firm fit, and oil will, under pressure, come out from these. The wisdom is, when you're using this type of gasket, you use a thicker o-ring, 
and you go to a 2.5 or a 2.6 depending on the thickness of the gasket you're using. Another oil leak potential area that is on the F series not on the K series is actually from these uh, tunnels where the uh, head studs go through and on the F series these are actually open to air, these two. These ones are solid all the way through. Try and explain that a little bit more. The studs that hold the head on come up through here. And on the K series, they're solid. Now, when I was stripping this, I was surprised to see that there were some copper washers not on all of them, but on some of them. And now I've looked into it, I've found that these two and these two should have a copper washer to seal it. And not a nut like this, but an actual cap nut. So that the oil can't go down the thread and out to air down here exactly where it was leaking when I was looking at the engine running. Still talking about leaks, did say about the pucks, and these were very well put in. So I was hoping that was gonna be the smoking gun, but in reality, it was well done. Now beyond that, it's have all the gaskets been put on and the gasket faces cleaned up, the standard stuff you'd have for engines. Um, that's the final thing about leaks that I'm going to have to address when I'm putting it back together. While I've got it stripped down though, I have noticed and I found this very, very worrying, that what appears to be swath built up in some of the areas. Now, I didn't see any swath in the oil filter or the oil when I took it out, but there's definitely up here. I'm hoping at the moment that it's something to do with the fact that these had been helicoiled and it hadn't been cleaned up and then the engine hadn't been run other than by me since then. Although I am worried that this swarf may well have caused catastrophic damage elsewhere and a little bit of an indication of that is on the cam towers. I did say they were not horrific, but there is definitely, they're not as smooth as I would have liked them. So that's something I'm gonna to have to consider before I'm putting this engine back together. So what looked like a really nice clean engine, and as I started to strip it down, one that had been given a little bit of care and attention, throws up lots of horror stories. So. It's, you know, it is a, it is a concern. Uh, I'm really worried about what I'm gonna do with the barrels and the pistons. If you've got any comments, advice on that, I'd really, really appreciate it. Don't be scathing of my measuring and such like. I've done, you know, a reasonable job with the tools that I've got. I know that there's better tools for measuring, but even what I've done shows me that there is a big problem. Anyway, it's been interesting. Thanks for watching if you've stayed with it so far. If you haven't already, why not subscribe, see what happens next with this, because I'm sure there'll be a few other episodes that I'll discover as I'm going through this engine.